Today is a second part in our four part series of questions that you have asked us either in the YouTube comments section or via our Instagram, via our Twitter or via our website. Last time we did questions about is Tesla still tax efficient? Who should use a director's loan? So check out that if you haven't seen that part. But today we are gonna be talking about family tax planning. And you've been asking us about the controversial school fees dividend diversion scheme, which has been in the news a lot recently for all the wrong reasons. And we're gonna cover something that lots of people get wrong that costs them a ton of money, and that is inheritance tax. So this is part two. If you like this, then you need to hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when part three and part four come out. Thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for all the comments and the feedback. It really helps us to make content that you find useful. There has been a lot in the papers recently about something called the school fees dividend diversion scheme. So what is it? And if someone has signed up to it, what do they need to do? These sort of mass marketed tax planning schemes, I think have had their day a little bit. I think bespoke tax planning works but you've you've got to you've got to be careful, and if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And this, I think, was one of those schemes. Now, what it basically did is again, if you had a business or you had private practice and it was a limited company, what you were being advised to do was to give shares in your company to a relative, and the reason for that is because this relative would set up a trust for your minor children. Now, if you set up a trust for your minor children then any tax advantage, it disappears because you're not allowed to do that because otherwise everybody would be setting up trusts for their for their kids and paying for school fees and all sorts of things through the trust. But this tax planning said, give shares to your brother, let's say, for example, he will set up a, a trust for your minor children and then income that goes into that trust that can be used to pay school fees will be taxed on your minor children and not on you. So if you are an NHS doctor paying 45% tax, then any income that you draw to pay your kids school fees will be taxed at 45%. If your kids are taxed on that income, then they've got 12 and a half thousand pounds of income, which is a personal allowance, which everybody has, which is taxed at a rate of zero. They've then got approximately another 30,000 pounds of income, which if it was dividend income, might only be taxed at 8.75%. So, you know, there was a great advantage. I mean, that gives 50,000 pounds worth of school fees per year per child. So unless you're going somewhere very exclusive, it's gonna cover most schools if you've got that level of income. Now, th this scheme was very popular and I was asked about this by several clients who were saying, look, my colleague is doing this, uh, it, it, it was tax planning, there was, a, there was a trust set up between you and the company and the trust then paid the school fees. They were saying, look, my colleague's doing this, it's saving him or her a fortune, can I do it please? And it's very difficult when you're in those circumstances because you're having to say to a client, no, I don't think it works, you can't do it. And then they would be saying to me, well, this other firm of accountants says it works, they're chartered accountants, why can't we do it? Well, fair enough. Uh, you, you, you can't argue with, it's difficult to argue with that, but I'm pleased that we didn't have any clients that were in that. Uh, it's interesting, actually, this was all highlighted originally by a guy called Dan Needle, who used to work for uh, Clifford Chance, I think, in the city. I think he was their tax partner. And he was also the chap who I think was largely responsible for uh, Nadim Zahawi having to resign as Tory party chairman. So again, he highlighted this. The revenue have now come out and said, yes, this doesn't work. And so if you're in a situation where you've taken advantage of this scheme, we've had several people have come to us about this, then really what you've just got to settle your taxes. If that income has been taxed as your kid's income, then you're going to have to do revised tax returns. You're going to have to pay the tax that should have been, that the revenue now say is due. And that will almost be at a higher rate because if you're going from zero or eight and three quarter percent tax to maybe 40 percent tax, then it's going to be a big tax charge. You might not get a penalty if you say you relied on professional advice we may be able to stop there being any penalty payable. I, I think that would be, I, I think you should be able to avoid a penalty if you've relied on professional advice. But you will have a charge to interest, of course. So that's Tommy, what you've got to do if you've done this scheme now. It, you're going to get caught out sooner or later, I would think. So the best thing to do probably is to come forward now, get in touch with the revenue, get your affairs in order, pay additional tax. If you don't have the funds, perhaps we can come to an arrangement with the revenue to pay it over a period of time 
And so that's it. That's the school fees dividend diversion scheme. It's dead in the water now. It never worked. It's been highlighted. It's been in the press, as you say. And uh, I think that's the ins and outs of it, really. And again, with tax planning, if I would always be aware of mass sort of bespoke tax planning has a much better chance of working in my experience. And this mass tax planning that was around a few years ago, I think has had its day. I think a few take homes for me there. One, you're right, it was Dan Needle and he's actually coming on the podcast. I had to cancel him for the same reason I had to cancel you initially was because I injured my hand, but he's coming on. I think the general principle there is if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And if you stick to that, rarely do you get caught out. And I think the final point is bespoke tax planning on an individual basis, great. But a one size fits all scheme, as you said, there's been numerous examples of this. I think that film thing was another one that's yeah. completely blown up as well, isn't it? So great tips. So another tax that is often misunderstood and that more oh, and yeah. more people are paying these days is inheritance tax. So why is inheritance tax well, so often misunderstood? And what are some simple steps that our listeners and viewers can take to mitigate the effect? Well, we're being asked more and more about this. I think it's coming into people's sort of uh, focus more. Because I think the Telegraph at the moment are running a let's get rid of inheritance tax campaign. And it, it's costing more and more people more and more money, especially, I suppose, in the southeast of England with house prices and everything. And it's one of these things which everybody knows a little bit about. And that's a little bit of a dangerous thing because people think, well, I know about this. and This is how we're going to avoid the tax. And often it's wrong. So what I thought I'd do is just go through a very simple example of something we did last month. My colleague dealt with this last month with a client. A uh, very simple example to say, show you how you could save, um, you know, quite a considerable amount of tax. But with inheritance tax, you always have to do everything properly. You've got to dot the I's and cross the T's. And often legal agreements have to be done and it's quite a lot of compliance work that often has to be done with inheritance tax. But let me just go through this very simple example. Now, most couples, husband and wife, have a million pounds worth of inheritance tax um, allowance. Everybody has 325,000 each. So uh, two times that is 650. And if you have a home or a house, then everybody has what's called a residential nil rate band that's worth 175. So 175 times two is 350. 350 plus 650 is a million quid. This is the million pounds that the Tories introduced. I think was it George Osborne introduced a few years ago and said, you're only going to pay inheritance tax if you have assets in excess of a million pounds. Well, that's not that much assets these days, especially if you've benefited from property price rises in the south of England. But we had a client who had, I think, an estate of 1.4 million. And the, the main assets in that were, uh, were his, his house where he lived, his home. And he also had a holiday home, which he visited not that often, but occasionally. And he said, look, what can I do? What will my inheritance tax be? Well, 1.4 million, less a million is 400,000. Multiply it by 40%, which is the inheritance tax rate. On a second death, that couple would have a liability of 160,000 pounds. So quite a lot of money in anybody's book, I would say. Okay, so we talked to them about the situation, talked to them about the holiday home. How often do you use it? What would you want to do? Who are you going to leave your assets to? And it came to light that they didn't use a holiday home very much. Their, 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 their grandchildren used it more than they did, in fact. And I asked, or my colleague asked them, well, look, how would you feel about giving the holiday home? By the way, didn't have a mortgage on it or anything. And my colleague said to them, well, look, why don't you give the holiday home to your children? If they use it, you know, adult grown up children, if you use it now, if they use it more than you do. And my colleague said, look, if you, if you give it to them, um, you survive seven years, there'll be no inheritance tax payable on that. There wasn't any capital gain on this. That's quite important as well. On this holiday home, there wasn't any capital gains to be paid. That's quite important. And there wasn't any stamp duty to be paid because it was a gift. So what they did was they gave the holiday home to their kids and that reduced their estate to a million. And therefore, there's no inheritance tax payable on that. Now, the, the thing you've got to realise in that, they can't continue to use that home as a holiday home. If they use it as a holiday home, they have to pay market rent. They can't gain any advantage. So they have to pay their children market rent to use the holiday home. So that's a disadvantage of it. So quite important. If they didn't do that, they would have reserved a benefit and the planning probably wouldn't work. So there's just a very simple case whereby giving, uh, you know, being very practical about it, 
I give that wouldn't have worked in everybody's circumstances. For example, if there was a large capital gain on the holiday home, it might not have worked, or you might have had to have done something else. But in those circumstances, you got all your ducks in a row, gave that holiday home to your kids. You'd save, you know, on the face of it, 160,000 on a second death from inheritance tax. And the drawback was that you can't reserve a benefit. You had to pay for the use of the holiday. So that's just a very simple example of, of, of it can be not that difficult to save inheritance tax. People often say the very wealthy don't pay it, it's paid by the middle classes, and that is true. But even the middle classes can do some very simple and practical things to save inheritance tax if they think about it. Again, people often don't think about it until it's too late. And so, so that's just a simple example. What I would say is though, inheritance tax, if that's an issue that you that you're concerned about, then you should get in touch with your tax advisor or your accountant, because often very simple steps can be taken that can save substantial amounts of tax. So that was just one part of this four part series. And if you are not subscribed to our channel, you might have missed the other parts. So why not hit the subscribe button now and check out the other episodes that you may have missed. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing.